everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Brown Bears Sports Report. I'm your host, Scott Cordishi. Glad you could join us. Our Brown Bears Sports Report is brought to you each week by United Healthcare. You put care into everything that you do, United Healthcare does too. United Healthcare, health plans that work for you and your family every step of the way. See what care can do at UHC. Dot com. Well, this week, it gives us great pleasure to welcome to the Brown Bears Sports Report, our women's equestrian team. And joining us on the show tonight, we have senior Hannah Woolley from Medfield, Massachusetts. Hannah, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you for being with us, Hannah. Also, a fellow senior from New York, New York, Lauren Reicher is our guest as well. Lauren, how are you tonight? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Lauren. Thank you for being with us. And also a junior from Hoover, Alabama, Elise Salazzo is with us as well. Elise, how are you tonight? I'm good. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you all for being with us tonight. And, uh, you know, Hannah, we'll start with you. You're a senior and obviously not the way that you want your career to end, but the pandemic pretty much shut everything down for the past year now. Um, first of all, just tell me how much you miss I guess, being with your teammates, being on horseback and, and doing your thing as part of the equestrian team. Yeah, I miss it so much. Um, we had a great fall and then spring season um, last year when I was on the team. Um, so it was unfortunate, certainly, that it was cut short. Um, and I definitely miss seeing all of my teammates practicing, um, even just having coffee with them, having breakfast at the Ratty and V-Dub. Um, so it's definitely been hard, but we're happy to be back together and at least doing some normal activities like lifting together, um, seeing each other on the weekends, which has been great. And Hannah, you competed in all seven shows last year. You won a blue ribbon on November the 2nd, and you were also named captain of the team. So that had to be uh, quite an honor for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been riding since I was little. So this has always been a dream to compete um, at such a high level on a college team. So it's been great. I've had a super fun time with the team and definitely have had my share of successes, which has been fun. Lauren, you competed in two shows last year as well. What do you miss most about uh, the pre-pandemic norm when you girls were able to do your thing and, and as Hannah said, you know, be together and eat meals at the Ratty and go to the barn and, and, and ride the horses and compete in shows. What do you miss most? Being at the barn with teammates is, there's nothing else like it. Um, it is such a nice break from the rest of the week. Um, it's, I mean, we have to set out a pretty good chunk of time for practices because it takes, it's an ordeal to get out there to tack up the horses and everything, but it really requires you to, you know, let go of the rest of the things you have going on back on campus. Practicing is fun. It's great to not, to go to the barn, kind of predict which horse you're going to ride, um, hang out with your teammates, the whole, the whole experience from start to finish, um, it's you don't really get that in like the non-collegiate equestrian world. So that's very special and something that I definitely miss. Elise, you competed in four shows last year and, and uh, you placed in three shows as a freshman. Um, does it seem like a long time ago when uh, since you've competed or does it kind of seem like only yesterday? No, for me, it definitely feels like it's been forever and I can't wait until we're able to go and actually ride again. Um, I miss it so much. And it really was, like Lauren was saying, like such a highlight of the week to be able to go out and ride and practice and to like kind of, it is like very meditative in a way too. And I just, I really can't wait until we're able to do it again. So what have you all been doing? You know, I've talked to other student athletes for other sports teams at Brown. And, you know, if you're a swimmer, you can find a pool and you can swim some laps. Or, you know, if you run cross country or track, you can go out and run. When you participate in your sport, equestrian, what have you been doing during the pandemic? What were you able to do to kind of, I guess, stay in game shape, so to speak? Um. So I'm very, very fortunate to have a few of my own horses back at home. So as soon as we got sent home from school, um, I, I got to start riding again right away. Um, as soon as barns were able to operate again, um, according to New York COVID guidelines. And I was very fortunate to have been working remotely over the summer and pretty much riding every single day when I've been home. Um, so the same thing over winter break from Thanksgiving past New Year's every single day I was out to the barn whenever I could um, to go ride and obviously like it's such a shame that riding in some ways has been kind of an exclusive sport outside of the collegiate setting because I know that not a lot of people can get that opportunity but um, 
like I said, I mean, I plan to, I plan to continue a competitive equestrian career for the rest of my life um, post college. So staying in good equestrian shape is very, very important to me. Um, even during pandemic times, as long as I can do it safely, I'm, I'll get out to the barn any way I can. Hannah, as I mentioned, you're from Medfield, Massachusetts, not too far away from Brown. How did you become involved in this sport in the first place? Yeah, so my mom grew up on a farm um, and they always had horses around. So I think I have to blame her for getting me into the sport. Um, I actually have a picture of me when I was, I think, two weeks old sitting on her childhood pony. And it just all kind of started from there. Elise, same question to you. You're from Hoover, Alabama. How did you become involved in the sport? Um, I actually, uh, I ride walk trot. So that's kind of the lowest level. And I was a total walk on. I hadn't ridden since I was like seven before I came to Brown. Um, and it's just the way that our sport is structured. Winning first place in walk trot class is just as many points for the team and for Brown as it is in open class. Um, and so for me, it was kind of just like, I saw a thing in today at Brown, like uh, Brown Equestrian taking walk-ons, all ability levels. And I emailed and I was like, all ability levels? And they said, yes, all ability levels. And that was that. And it was one of the best decisions I think I've made at Brown. Lauren, I, I think many people that are watching this have probably seen the documentary on you, which I thought was so well done, Go Forth Unafraid. But it talks about you living your life with cerebral palsy and, and competing in Division I college athletics. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and, and how therapeutic it has been for you to get on the back of a horse? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, riding, to say that riding has given me everything would be a tremendous understatement. Um, before I, I started riding when I was less than four years old and before that I was in a wheelchair I didn't walk I didn't sit up I didn't I could barely do anything independently um and I used a walker so besides you know giving me a lot of physical mobility the thing that riding has given me has been this freedom and independence that I could never experience on the ground going, growing up due to my disability I was excluded from a lot of more traditional after school activities and traditional stick and ball sports so I didn't know if you had told me as a kid that I would grow up one day to be an NCAA division one equestrian, I wouldn't have known what that even meant. Um, so, you know, hearing when I, it wasn't until I first came and visited Brown as an applicant that I heard about um, the athletic opportunities that they had for equestrians. And it was, it was one of the main things that drew me to Brown. Um, so it has given me sportsmanship um, and so much joy and furthered my passion for equestrian um, so it has been a remarkable experience and, you know, it has kept me in a very important kind of physical shape as I've gone to college. I'm, I'm not at home. I don't do physical therapy the same way that I used to do growing up. So having access to lift facilities, athletic facilities, athletic trainers and equestrian sports has been, you know, integral to my physical health while I'm away at college. So all of those things, you know, were important factors that I had to consider when choosing a school. So the fact that Brown was able to extend those opportunities to me, and there are not many people in the NCAA, I bet, who look like me or who whose bodies work like mine. So in many ways, I, I've always felt that Brown, by offering the opportunity for me to be a D1 athlete, is kind of changing the narrative of what it means, uh, what, you know, what an athlete looks like. Hannah, some of our uh, athletic teams have been able to get back to practicing uh, together, um, but obviously yours is a little bit of a different case in that the barn is off campus, and because of that, um, it's been kind of difficult. So what, if anything, are you allowed to do? Has the team spent some time in the weight room, or what at all have you been allowed to do in terms of team activities here on campus? Yeah, so the team has been lifting twice a week in the weight room with Coach Jay and Coach O'Neill, which has been awesome. I feel like every week we're finding new muscles that we haven't worked in a year, which is great. Um, yeah, we're definitely ready to get out and riding whenever that is safe for us to do. Um, they say that riding a horse is like riding a bike, so the muscle memory just kind of comes back. So hopefully that's the case and we can get the ball running next year. Now on your bio, it says you compete in open flat and open fences. Can you explain that in layman terms to us? Yeah, absolutely. So we compete in the equitation division where we're judged on our form and also our effectiveness. Um, so at all of our competitions, we're getting on a random horse that we mostly haven't ever seen before. 
and we're asked to go around and jump over a course of about eight obstacles for fences and there we're still judged on our form and effectiveness um, and then on the flat we're also on a random course and are going around the ring navigating um, with a bunch of other competitors and the judges are evaluating us and testing our ability to follow their commands and um, the different maneuvers that are asked of us. Uh, Elise, your sport spans over two seasons, fall and the spring. How do they differ uh, or are they very much the same? You just have a fall season and a spring season. We generally have more shows in the fall. In the fall, we show just about every weekend and some weekends we even show twice. Versus in the spring, we usually only have like three to four shows, but Ivy's is also in the spring. So, Lauren, um, tell us a little bit about, you know, you are listed as a novice, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so explain that to us, again, in layman's terms, for the uninitiated like me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, so as a novice, you're essentially asked to do the same things. There is a, a flat, a non-jumping phase, and a fences phase. So um, the only, the main difference in terms of the main difference for fences is that the jumps are smaller, they're lower in height. Um, but the, and, and on the flat, you may be asked to perform movements that aren't quite as advanced or quite as, yeah, you'll just be asked to perform different movements from the open level um, or ask the horse to do different things. But it's the same in the sense that there is a flat phase which you are judged on on a random horse and a fences phase. Elise, uh, Coach Scanlon is the only coach in program history. She's now in her 25th season as the head equestrian coach here at Brown. Tell us what Michaela's like and, and her knowledge of the sport and, and what it is that you all do. Michaela never ceases to amaze me because every time it seems like I'm trying everything and I don't know what's going on and it's still not working. Uh, she always just finds the exact right thing to hone in on and it's... She is so effective um, and so knowledgeable and she is, um, she can come off as like sometimes like being like a little like harsh, uh, not harsh, that's the wrong word, like willful or forceful, um, but she really does care about all of us so much and it's so obvious and like the way that she will go up to bat for us and defend us. Like I remember right at the start of COVID, like last March, uh, one of our teammates uh, found out that she had been exposed to like one of the first people in the state of Rhode Island who had tested positive for COVID. And the Rhode Island Department of Health um, basically like kidnapped her from her dorm room just before she was supposed to go. Um, and Michaela was the first one there to go and defend her and make sure that like she had food, she had like people and that her family knew what was going on. And I think that's just like such a good summary of who Michaela is as a person. So Hannah, you and Lauren are both seniors. First of all, Hannah, what's your concentration at Brown? My concentration is biology, specifically the ecology and evolutionary bio track. Okay, and so when you graduate this spring, what are your plans for after graduation? Um, I'll be applying to med school and then meanwhile working for my gap year um, as a medical assistant in Massachusetts. Oh, terrific. Uh, Lauren, same question to you. What's your concentration and what are your plans for after graduation? Um, I'm a double concentrator in education and public policy and I'm planning on working very, very closely um, with the national governing body of equestrian sports, USEF. So the way that the NFL is to football, USEF is to all equestrian sports. So I'm gonna be working with their um, diversity, equity and inclusion department and also their marketing department. That's terrific, congratulations. Elise, I know you're only a junior, but same question, what's your concentration? And ideally, what would you like to do after you graduate from Brown next year? Uh, my concentration is Slavic studies, but I'm actually pre-med um, and I'm planning on taking a gap year to work full-time in EMS. I work part-time as an EMT right now. Um, and then I'm going to be applying to med school as well. But do you work for Brown EMT or? I actually work for Swansea EMS over in Massachusetts. Very good. Well, thank you for that, for your service, because I know you are a lifesaver, literally and, uh, and figuratively. So uh, I, I think we've all uh, learned to really appreciate 
what people like you do, particularly during these difficult times that we've been going through. Lauren, I want to ask you about something. Um, Gallup NYC is an organization that is very near and dear to your heart. Can you explain to the viewers exactly what that is all about? Sure. So Gallup NYC is a nonprofit organization that actually gave me my start with horses. Um, we do therapeutic horsemanship. Um, and pre-pandemic times at capacity, we served more than 600 riders a week in the five boroughs of New York. Um, so we serve riders with all different types of disabilities, physical, mental, socio-emotional. We also serve post-combat veterans and senior citizens. So we try to bring the magic of therapeutic horsemanship and all of its benefits to as many riders with disabilities as possible. And we try to help all those that we serve live their lives as fully and independently and accessibly as possible. So what that means for us is so much more than just having a mounting ramp or giving everybody the same helmet. We know that accessibility is about so much more. And because the wider equestrian sport can sometimes be financially inaccessible or any number of other reasons, we do do our best to um, make sure that we, we, we look at the fact that more than 80% of our participants are low income. So we try to subsidize the cost of lessons and enrollment for as many people as possible. All those who need it, we don't want financial barriers to be the reason that they don't have access to um, literally the transformational um, benefits of therapeutic horseback riding. So we try to maximize our impact on riders you know, with, with stories and, and missions just like little, little Lauren. Um, so it's a very, very near and dear organization to my heart um, that I plan to continue to be involved in for the rest of my life. And is there somewhere people can go if they want more information on Gallup NYC? Mm -hmm, for sure. They can go to gallupnyc.org. Um, and if anybody were to have any questions about Gallup or want to get involved, highly recommend reaching out to our executive director, James Wilson. Hannah, let's, uh, let's have a little fun now. Uh, you'll be graduating, as I said, in just a few months. Uh, tell me what your favorite spot on campus is. Hmm. I think probably the main green. I love the energy of the green on like warm spring days when everyone is just out like playing frisbee or studying. Um, you can just really tell how passionate and enthusiastic the student body is. And it's just a great space to meet people and catch up with friends. How about Thayer Street? What's your go-to spot on Thayer Street? Um, as the team knows, I'm a coffee uh, aholic, so I love Blue State and just catching up with friends um, and studying there. Okay, Lauren, same questions to you. Favorite spot on campus and favorite spot on Thayer Street? Um, I like the Blue Room and the whole Fonts building on campus and on Thayer Street, gotta be Eastside Pockets. Okay, Elise, what about you? Best spot on campus and favorite spot on Thayer? Um, on campus, I actually really like the the quad, like right in between where the Nelson is, and like when you're walking down on Thayer, like where that's there's that little cut through path. Yep, that place is fantastic. Um, and on Thayer, I'm really partial to Chinatown. Okay, um, did any of you spend time during the pandemic, particularly the early months, binge watching any television programs that you want to share with us, Hannah? Um. I watched a lot of Criminal Minds and unfortunately watched Tiger King, which was interesting. <laughs> Lauren, how about you? Um, I watched Designated Survivor with a guy from 24. Love um, it. That was so exciting. I loved that. I binge watch it too, so I'm with you. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> Elise, how about you? Um, I unfortunately have horrible taste and binge watched all 17 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you don't have horrible taste. My wife loves that show and I used to watch it with her, but after like 10 seasons, I think I gave up on it. I I'd had enough. <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense anymore. I, I don't even know why I watch it, but I still do. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Um, so, Hannah, tell us what you are going to miss the most when you graduate from Brown. When you look back at your four years here, what are you going to miss the most? Definitely the team. Um, it's been such a great space to meet people um, and just bond over a common hobby and passion. Um, definitely lifts and then going to breakfast at the V-Dub and then off to lessons was just such a great experience. And the camaraderie that we felt from the team was just unbeatable. Lauren, how about you? What are you going to miss? Friends. Um, I have never met a community of 
people like Brown students, they're all just so warm, so welcoming, kind, good, passionate people. Um, and I didn't realize how much they have shaped me and affected me. And as we get closer to the end, and I have so much time to like think about my four years, the defining, the defining thing of it all has of being at Brown has been the people here for sure. Elise, I know you mentioned this earlier, how much you're looking forward to it. Uh, how much, how excited are you for this fall when hopefully things return to uh, normalcy somewhat and, and you're able to compete once again? I cannot wait. Um, I'm really hoping to move up in a division, which you do once you win first enough times. So I'm really hoping to do that this next fall. And I really, really think that like, we are going to come back very strong and it's just gonna be so nice to be able to like see my teammates in person again and actually go riding with them and meet the new teammates that I haven't gotten to see in person yet. Well, Elise, thank you for joining us tonight on the show and Hannah and Lauren, thanks so much for your four years of service to not just the equestrian team, but to the athletic department and, and to the university. And we certainly wish you both the very best of luck in your futures. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, thank this is great. All right, Hannah Woolley, Lauren Reicher, and Elise Salazzo, our guests from the Brown Women's Equestrian Team on this week's edition of the Brown Bears Sports Report. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.